What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Fighting Game Tutorial Series, we're going to be going over AI Part 2, and in this case, we're going to be triggering certain states and actions using our AI controller. We're going to tell the character to go into a certain state based on what the AI thinks is the right decision. We are going to force them into that state, so let's go into an example. Let's go into Arcade, and I will pick our characters for Arcade. As of the last episode, we've set up Arcade to use an AI controller to possess the second player. And so when we come in here, I will have no control over the second player, no matter what I do. The first player, I do control. And the character is just standing here, and that's an easy one. We don't really have to force them to do anything to make this work. But let's scroll down to our AI controller now. That's the base AI controller. And here you'll see I have something called the practice state. This is essentially going to be what we want to force the character state to be. And we're doing this through the AI controller. So if we had logic and branching, you would notice that the AI could choose, hey, I think now is a good time to crouch or now is a good time to block. And it could actually do that. We're forcing them just like you'd see in a practice or training mode where you can set the dummies behavior. So maybe you only want them to crouch or you only want them to block or you want them to jump continuously. That way you can test your combos on opponents like that. And that's really what we're going for here. We'll go into a lot more depth on the practice mode AI in the future, but this is the very start of that type of behavior. So I can take my practice state and I can change it to something like force jumping. And when I come back into the window here, you'll see that the AI is repeatedly telling the character to jump over and over again. I can also switch to something like forced crouching. When I come back in here, you'll see the AI is just stuck in the crouching state. Right, we can go on to the next round here. You see I've won it because we've done enough damage. Let's switch them to force blocking. You'll see the character is just stuck in the blocking state. And then when we want to reset them, we can switch this back to none. The character should go back to normal and you'll see that they do. So the character is now in their idle state and they're not doing anything. So the AI itself is not handling any of the actual logic or branching yet. It's not making decisions, but the controller is sending message to the character or really calling functions on the character, telling them what they should do at this time. And so this is really the start of AI. We're using the controller to control what the character is doing. Now, before we hop into the episode, if you want to get caught up in the series, we are on episode 216. So we're really far along. I recommend looking at this playlist right here in the top right corner. You can check out every episode of the fighting game tutorial series that we've covered already. Alternatively, if you only care about the AI, I recommend you watch this episode right here, which is the previous episode where we initially set up the AI controller. And with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. We're going to do almost everything in the code today. We're going to start in the code. So let's go to Visual Studio and let's go to our base AI controller.h. In the previous episode, the AI controller had very little in it. It had a few includes up at the top, it had our class, it had the constructor with the generated body. I've now added four functions for today's episode, an enum and two variables. Let's start with the very basics and we need to actually add an include, which is our fighter template character. Now, the controller possesses a pawn. In our case, the pawn is our fighter template character. You could have this base AI controller possess other types of classes as well. But regardless of what type of class we are possessing, we do need to have access to the potential classes that we could possess. Because if not, then we won't be able to cast to that class and call certain actions on it. So including the fighter template character will allow us to do things like call functions on the fighter template character class. So if we possess a pawn that is a fighter template character, we can do things like call the jump function or call the start manually blocking function. So include fighter template character dot h. Make sure it is above the dot generated dot h aligning. Otherwise it won't compile. Then I've added an enum. Now AI doesn't really work like this where we just set them to a state and they're good to go. They should be making decisions based off logic in the game. And so because of that, this is kind of a forced state system. And this is something more along the lines of you see in practice mode, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm calling this the E for Enu, AI practice state. This is not gonna be the state that we're using for all of our systems, but it can still be useful in our game. So I've made UEnum a blueprint type so we can access it in the blueprints. And I've called it Enum class. 
E A I practice state colon unsigned integer eight or uint eight. For my values, I have my default is E underscore none. Basically, this just means we're not forcing them into any particular state, so they're essentially in their idle or default state. U meta display name equals is just how this name is going to show up in the editor, so in the blueprints and in the world outliner, things like that. So I just have it as none. Then I have E underscore forced jumping, forced crouching, and forced blocking. You can add as many or as little as you'd like. I'd recommend adding as many as you plan on having in your practice mode. So if you're gonna have the dummy be able to do certain actions like jump, crouch, block, attack, then go ahead and add them all in here. Now scrolling down to the actual class for the AI controller, we are going to wanna to override the tick function. The controller class by default has a tick function and so does the AI controller. So we don't need to make our own, we can just override the tick function that already exists and fill out our own logic for it. To do this, we can write virtual void tick float delta time override. So void tick float delta time is pretty standard for creating a function, but virtual and override means that we can actually add our own behavior to this function that already exists by overriding it in a child class. Then I've made three functions for my own project here, which is force jump, force crouch, and force block. Force jump is going to force the AI to add the jump input every possible chance. Force crouch is going to force the AI to add the crouch input at every chance. And force block is going to force the AI to add the block input at every chance. Again, feel free to add more or really just one for every state that you have in this enum. You can technically skip the default for now, although you could also handle behavior for that if you'd like. Then I have the public keyword here, and this is because I'm going to do a few things with variables, specifically setting the possess pawn of the AI controller and creating an instance of our enum we made up above. And I do want to make these blueprint read write so I can access and edit them in the blueprint and they need to be in the public section to do that. So like a lot of my variables, I have U property, edit anywhere, blueprint read write, so we can edit and access them in the blueprint and then I give it a category of AI controller. It is of type a fighter template character pointer. This is why we needed the include up above. So this controller is only planning to possess our fighter template characters. We could have other AI such as minions and things. Those would be a different type of controller or we could change the fighter template character to be something like an actor or a character instead of the specific fighter template character class, which would allow us to do that behavior. So we can keep it open for now, but just make it your base class for the time being so that we can do everything as simply as possible. I've called this possessed pawn. Now I have another U property line with the same parameters and I'm making an instance of the enum class, E AI practice state, and I just call it practice state. Once you're done with that, you're done with the base AI controller header file for now. Let's go into the base AI controller.cpp file. In the constructor, I went ahead and set these two default values. We had nothing in here in the previous episode. So possess pawn is going to be set to null pointer by default. And the practice state is going to be set to the default enum value of e AI practice state colon colon e underscore none. I've made my three functions, my force jump, force crouch, and force block, which we can go ahead and set up now. So they're all void, void a base AI controller, colon, colon, and then the name of the function. So again, force jump, force crouch, force block. In all these functions, I basically do the same thing. So to keep it simple, instead of just setting the character state to the specific value, I'm actually calling the correct function. This is important because the correct function if it gets called, it could have a lot more logic than just setting the character state. It might check for other states first and if you can transfer from one state to another. Just because this is an AI controlling it and not a player does not mean we wanna skip steps. The AI should play fair and it should function the same as a character would if it was controlled by a player. So for force jump, we check to see if possess pawn exists, if it's valid, if there is a pawn that is possessed by this AI controller. And if there is, we're gonna call it the jump function on the possessed pawn. 
Remember, this is a fighter template character pointer, so calling the jump function is the jump function in the fighter template character class. For force crouch, we're doing the same thing. We're checking to see if there is a pawn, and if there is, we're calling start crouching. For force block, same thing. Check to see if there's a pawn, and if there is, we're calling start manually blocking. So very simple setup. Now we can go into our tick function and actually determine when we should call these functions. So void a base AI controller, colon colon tick, passing in that float delta time. To start off, we're gonna call the parent tick function. The controllers do have tick functions, as I mentioned earlier, and they have things that we may wanna do in our AI controller. So calling super, colon colon tick, and passing in that delta time is a good idea. Then I am adding a switch statement on the practice state enum value. And we're going to go case by case to grab each value of the enum and determine what we should do for each case. So case e AI practice state colon colon e underscore none colon. So for our first case here, if we're in the none state, if there is a possessed pawn, I want to set the possessed pawn back to the character state of default or none. This time I am going to override it instead of calling a function because I don't have any sort of function like return to idle in the code. But resetting the character state will do essentially that. We only want to do this if there is a possess pawn, so make sure you add this check. And then we can call possess pawn set character state. Our character state is not in a public view, so we can't actually just set the value. We need to go into our fighter template character.h class, scroll down to our getters and setters if we have any. Basically, I just put them toward the end of my function list. And if you've been following the series, you'll have things like our get character class and set super meter. It's the same idea here. We're going to make a new function called set character state that's void and it takes in a state. And so essentially we can call this function from anywhere from other classes, even though we can't set the character state directly and we'll get the same result. So after making this function, we can go into the fighter template character.cpp, scroll down to where we want to add this function. I put it a little bit above my tick. So it's right here. So I have void a fighter template character, colon, colon, set character state, passing in the character state union value called underscore state. Essentially, when this function is called, we're literally just going to set character state equal to the result that was passed in. Very, very simple setter there. And now we can go into the base AI controller.cpp again. And we're going to call this function, so possess pawn, set character state, and we're going to pass in e character state, colon, colon, underscore default. Make sure we have the break keyword after that because we don't want to spill through to these other states and do that logic, so break will break out of the switch statement. Then for our next case, e underscore force jumping, we want to call our force jump function. We don't need to check for the possess pawn because it is checked in each one of these functions. After calling that function, we can go ahead and break. For the next case, forced crouching, we want to call our force crouch function. Remember to break afterward. And for the last one, force blocking, we want to call force block and make sure we break afterward. You can also add a default case if you'd like. So if it somehow doesn't fit in any of those values, default colon break. So we won't do anything if we hit this case. It's a good practice to have a default in a switch statement, even though it can't really reach that value right now. At this point, we can go ahead and launch the editor. We need to set our possessed pawn to the proper value when the game is being loaded. All right, the editor is back open. So now we can go into our blueprints and go to our game mode BP. In here, we can go into our spawn players function. In the previous episode, we possessed the pawn with the AI controller that we created and the pawn we were possessing was the player two. Basically, we were always assuming in these modes that the second character or player two was an AI. After doing this, we simply want to set the possessed pawn so that the controller has a reference to it. It's not really required that you do this. There are other ways of going about it, but at least for the time being, I want to handle it this way because I think it will make a lot more sense when we get into more of the examples. So I'm going to drag off of my base AI controller and I want to set possessed pawn and the pawn that we're gonna pass in is player two. So the same thing that we were passing in to possess is going to get passed in to the possessed pawn as well. 
It's the same way we did it for the base player controller. So now we'll know what the possessed pawn is and if it's valid or not. At that point, we can go ahead and load up our game. Go into arcade, play on a map. And when we select the base AI controller in the world outliner, we should be able to change the practice state variable under the AI controller category and see the results that we would expect. This will be fully configurable in the practice menu in the future. But for now, this is just a good demo to make sure our AI controller is working as expected. That way we can actually do real logic and real behavior that you would think of when you think of an AI in a fighting game. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this next episode for the fighting game AI. If you did, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do, and I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership, Patreon, and Discord supporters. You guys keep this series alive, and I am so excited to see where I can take this series with you in the future. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. It's completely free. I'd be happy to get you set up. Anyway, guys, like I said, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.